Living and breathing La Vida Boa. Welcome to the Boa Life Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen DeMora, alongside host Nick Colhe. We're here to have great conversations and to figure out the secret to success, the secret to the Boa Life. Hey, everybody. I'm your co-host, Nick Colhe, and this is the Boa Life Podcast, episode number 15. Are you ready to do this, Steve? Let's go. Hello everyone, tonight's guest is someone that I call a friend. She's a very successful real estate agent in the Danbury area, someone that Steve and I work closely with over the past few years, someone we're happy to have on. Welcome, Angelina Valentini. Well, thank you, Nick, and thank you, Steve, for having me. I appreciate it very much. Looking we're, forward to this. We're so psyched to have you on, and as I just told the audience, we've worked together for a couple of years, and um, it was scary getting into real estate. I know. For me, I was completely out of my element um, from the second I heard my brother-in-law, Dan, as you know, um, become an agent. I, I grabbed a hold and I, and I kind of took his tail and he dragged me along a little bit and he said, you got to meet Angelina. Aw. Well, Dan is a doll to work with. He's been great. I love having him on the team and you've been an asset as well. And it's been so much a pleasure for me to get to know you guys and especially the BOA family. Yes. yes and uh, now the, the BOA life. I love it. Yeah, and you work close with Steve, too. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I was looking through some dates today. Um, you and I, I think, met when Sandy sold her house and bought a new one, I think, in like 2013. That's, you Isn't that a, crazy? You have a great memory. I can't believe it was... That long ago. Yeah. That's when we first met. And then I met Dan when Dan was um, working with Joe and Allie to buy a house. And then I think that was like in 16. And then I think you came in around 17. That's and right. It's been a few years The rest years is history. Now. And, and for the record, the you know, I'm, 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 I'm low on the totem pole. I have other focuses in my life. Unfortunately, you know, real estate takes a backseat at the moment. But, but as I said, you've been, a, you've been an, uh, an honor to work with. And uh -huh. I really uh, look up to you because you're nothing but an extremely hard worker. I appreciate that a lot. And the stuff that you've done since you've been with the uh, team and the company has been extraordinary. Um, you've learned really fast. And I know that you and Dan and even Kelly and Lori have had a lot of fun with real estate. Yes. And uh, there's a lot more to come. And I'm happy that you're part of the team. I love having you and working with you. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. So um, the viewers can see you're a William Ravis broker or agent? What's I'm actually, I am a, a, a real estate agent uh, with William Ravis. Uh, we have our own company. My husband's actually a broker. Anthony and um, I am licensed as a real estate agent here in Connecticut and also in New York and I also have my broker's license with William Ravis in Florida. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it actually I've met I've, yeah, and I've met the Boas in Florida. I don't know if you guys know that story. Uh, no, it don't just. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we do. I don't want to get in trouble with anybody. Is it a trip I wasn't invited on? <laughs> no, you weren't. Um, but anyway, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. Um, at one point, they were looking for property down there. And uh, I think you both know that I represented uh, Ray and Zalmira when they sold their home. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how Dan and I kind of started working together and he, before when he came over to our team. And then at one point, they started looking in Florida, weren't sure of the area that they wanted to start in. And they asked me if I would you know, meet them down there. And I thought, oh, yeah, no problem. No, no problem at all. So I flew down um, and I knew I had a schedule to show them a few houses. And it was great because I kind of expected Ray and Zalmira and I think maybe, was it maybe Joe? And then um, when I met them at the first house to show them, a huge vehicle showed up <laughs> and out came maybe eight of the Boa family <laughs> members. Is that and how you guys great. all roll? Travel in numbers, it I love great. it. It was great. So I, I met Al and his wife and, yep. and uh, Louie and Danny. Yeah. I, I met the whole crew. Whole um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's such a wonderful family. I mean, you, you guys are really blessed. You come from a beautiful family. I, I admire them and uh, just getting to know a little bit of Ray and Zulmira and, you know, your two wives. They're just, what a beautiful family. You've been blessed. Well, I'm blessed to be accepted into it. And that's a beautiful thing. I've done enough good in my life to be accepted into it. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are very blessed. They're we a fun family. Yeah, yeah. They're great. Good yeah. people. I appreciate that. That's the beauty of uh, <clears throat> the family and the relationships we build and the teams we build all working to the same goals and same successes. I've been fortunate enough to, to work with your daughter now too, yeah. who's, who's part of the team. Yeah. And uh, 
you, you can get a lot done when you're work, working with people that are, are of the same mindset, working towards the same ends. And it's been a pleasure working with you for sure. And the fact that you came on our show, I, I, I'm completely in awe and I, I'm, I can't tell you how grateful that I am that you would come on our show because it's not for everyone. It's, I know, hard to do to share your story and to have, you know, a conversation that's being recorded and filmed. And, and thank you so much for, I know, coming maybe outside of your comfort zone and joining us today and having this conversation because I think that it's going to be incredible experience for you, I hope, and it'll certainly be an incredible experience for the audience because I know that you have a lot to share wow. um, with the audience and the journey that you've, you've, you've gone on and are continuing to go on. So well, I thank appreciate you. the invite again, and I appreciate your kind words. Um, this is really super uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 I'm just being honest because it's who I am. Yeah. You know, I don't particularly care to be in front of a camera or have my photo taken or to hear my voice later on. But my, as you said, my daughter Elise, you know, she came into the business full time this year. She's been a teacher and uh, decided to make a career change. And she's all about, you know, doing her business with uh, technology and social media and stuff. And it's really worked great. And her business has really taken off. So she and other team members encourage me uh, practically daily and practically every 10 minutes to get out there and do more and get out of my comfort zone to be able to be on social media and stuff. So this is this is different. I'm uh, glad to give it a shot and hopefully it'll lead to much more um, uh, experiences that are uncomfortable because you know when you get into that uh, that out of your comfort zone and do something different, sometimes you know change really can bring a lot of cool stuff you know in the future. So who knows? Maybe this will become a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, good. and that's almost exactly what has happened to me a few times. Just random things I'm thinking that wouldn't have happened if I didn't take a step forward and do something uncomfortable for sure um, just being on this podcast with Steve alone has been been amazing and something I was super afraid of from day one yeah so well, it's I, like one of those things right like speaking in front of people they say yeah. one is one of the scariest things to do in life people there's some crazy stats out there saying they'd rather you know they'd rather die than go and, and talk you know public speak it, it, it's insane yeah and um, it's a little I, I think everyone feels the jitters no matter how they look Mm -hmm. or sound yeah. on a mic so it, it's natural it's it's good to be uncomfortable yeah um so i met you as a very successful <laughs> real estate agent mm -hmm. in the area and i i've listened to your story and we, we've shared many conversations in the past but i think what i'm more curious more is how did how did you get into real estate what was the reason you switched careers to go into real estate and and, and things like that so um, it's an interesting story, um, a little bit long. I won't go into everything, but my husband and I, um, we've been married, it'll be 40 years next year. And uh, when we first got married, the month before we got married, we bought our first home. And we just really loved real estate. We traveled a lot, uh, bought our first home, came, got married, moved into it. And then within six months, we bought a second home. And it was a vacation home up at Mount Snow. Um, loved it, and right out of the gates then went and bought two um, investment properties in Connecticut. And it was almost like a, like a subliminal thing. You know, we really loved buying and selling properties and kind of getting involved with real estate. So kind of fast forward over the years, um, you know, I decided to get into real estate kind of on a whim. Back in 2004, my parents were in a really bad car accident, and only a week later, um, traveling up to the ICU, I was in a car accident. And um, it was crazy the way it all happened. And um, I wound up needing two spinal surgeries two years in a row and was unable to uh, drive and do a lot of things and was in a neck brace for six months each year. And I had a dear friend who lived in town at the time. I've since sold her house and she lives up in the vineyard. And she used to supply me with my reading material. So I'm reading book after book after book. And one day my husband comes home and he says, what are you doing? I'm sitting there with my neck brace on and I'm reading a book. He said, you know, we've talked about real estate forever. He said, why don't you, while you're kind of recuperating, why don't you think about maybe taking the class? And I thought, well, maybe I can do that. You know, so I called over to the local board and figured out how to do it. And they gave me all the paperwork and the, the books and stuff. And I started to read about real estate in the training material that you have to go through. 
and um, I decided, oh my gosh, I love what I'm reading, and this is something I think I could really get into and enjoy doing. And it was just like on a whim that I decided to get into real estate. So um, my daughter at the time, Elise, was probably in high school, like just got her license and was driving me to and from the classes that were two nights a week. Got my license in 2006, started out uh, kind of part-time, went full-time in 07, and then um, kind of went straight to the top where I was for over 10 years as a solo agent. Um, and then after that, decided that I really wanted to start a team, and that's when I came over to the company where I am now and started our team, the Valentini Group. And you know, you guys came on, and it's been an unbelievable journey. And you know, our career has catapulted since making that change. The thing that I love about real estate is that it's it's a people business. You know, I know that we sell homes, but we're making you know, we're matching people and properties and um, lifestyles and helping people you know grow to create maybe their own family of two or their family with children or whatever, or maybe you know go into their retirement home or whatever. It's a people helping people business. And I love it. I love it. It just happened. Um, I enjoy it immensely. And since coming into this company and developing our team, my whole goal in doing that was to be able to not only have a little bit more flex with my own real estate schedule, but also to be able to help other people to create the business that they wanted to create within the group. Because everyone has a different goal, right? Like my goal, it may be different than your goal. And like you said before, and I don't know how you all do it, especially look at where you are here doing a podcast and you both have full-time jobs and you do real estate, you know, whatever. Um, you know, everybody has a different goal and it's, it's my job as a team leader to hopefully help everyone as best as I can to get them to reach that goal. So that's kind of how I got into real estate and the rest is history. Uh, it's been great. Um, what was that drive? You mentioned going, going head first from day one and, and, and being super successful over, what did you say, about 10 years or so? Yeah. Before starting a team. Mm -hmm. um, and just looking back, I mean, any of us can see that you've been super successful from day one. What was that driving force? Like what, what, what made you wake up every morning and, and got you motivated to to keep moving forward? It was, um, I had a goal in mind when I first started real estate. And my personal goal was to, at the time the kids were, I have three children. Um, and my goal was to do this business as a job, not as you know a hobby and sell a house here and there. But my goal was to get the kids through college without debt. That was my one goal. And I kind of developed this whole visual visualization thing where I had a dream board and I put things on my board that I could see every day. Um, that was my main priority. Um, and it was about having a little more time and freedom, although the way that we work, I don't know how much time and freedom I have. <laughs> but in all honesty, it was really focused on my family. Um, and. You know, when I look at like where we are today and what my, how I set my goals and that sort of thing, I also look back on where I came from. You know, I'm the oldest of five kids. <clears throat> I grew up in New York. Uh, we lived upstairs from my grandmother and grandfather, my Italian grandmother and grandfather. My dad is Italian. My mom is Swedish. And we lived upstairs from them until I was six. And every day we had interaction with our grandparents. We were a really tight family. It was about tradition. It was about love, connection, and that kind of thing. And when I was six, my dad bought the, his first house with my mom up in Putnam County in Mayapak, and that's where I grew up. Um, and I watched my dad work two jobs, and my mom was home with us, the five kids. I'm the oldest of five, like I said, myself, three boys, and my sister's 16 years younger. And I watched my father really work hard, and my mom really work hard to keep a roof over our head. You know, my dad was a blue collar worker for the city of New York. Mom stayed home with the five kids. It wasn't easy. And, um, you know, I grew up in a raised ranch with uh, three bedrooms and seven people in one bathroom. It and, sounds very familiar. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Very familiar. I mean, and I, and I really think a lot of when you ask where did your drive come from, came from the way I grew up. I, I, I had no idea we were not rich. I mean, we were a family that really, you know, we were poor, you know, and I tell my kids even now, I always remind them, you know, think about where you came from because I remember growing up and in the wintertime, me and my brothers and helping dad, Poppy, cover all the windows with um, plastic to keep the house warm, you know, that's how I grew up and I loved it. 
I didn't know that I had less than anyone else. I grew up with a ton of love. Mm -hmm. Our grandparents, even when we lived to Ma by Mayapak, every single Sunday was spent with family. My grandparents either came up or we went down to their house and it was eating, it was food, it was joy, it was laughter, it was church. It wasn't running out to a sporting event. It wasn't being at the mall. The kids were together. You know, we were family. We ate dinner together. I grew up eating dinner together. My children grew up eating dinner together with us at the table. We still do it. And I think watching them work so hard just gave me such a burning desire and deep in my soul that whatever I did, I wanted to do it the very best that I could. And I had parents that supported me, gave me strength in the believing and loving me. And it's what I wanted to instill in my kids if I was blessed to have them. And I did. And I, uh, that's how I brought my kids up to really just put your very best out there in anything you do. Be the best at whatever you are doing. That's what I try to do. That's it's, our recurring theme. Yeah, these pillars and these foundations you keep hearing over and over again. Some of the people that we meet that I would you know, su suggest to the audience are successful people by really any metric. Um, you hear kind of these 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 same things over and over again and um, this ethos this work ethic these family values the traditions that then you want to you know give to your to your to your children and, and push that forward like we talk about legacy and the whole reason for this podcast is to educate people um, to let them hear stories to interpret it in any way they want but um, here you are now in a business a family business I always talk about balance. I, it's sometimes hard to balance family, work life, all that. Does it make it easier or harder to balance all these things when you have family? You know, it's almost a family business for you, especially with team. And, and Yeah. You know, it's, um, I almost think it's easier because we all have one another's back, you know. So, you know, with my daughter, especially getting into the business, we've always been very close. She lives in town. Um, and she now being involved with the business, we probably speak with each other literally 10 times a day, um, which is great. And it's funny, but I think back on me, when I first worked at IBM and I was living in Mayapak and I used to travel down to White Plains to go to work, I called my mom on the way to work. I'd call my mom when I got to work. I'd call my mom on my lunch break. I'd call her before I was leaving at night and I'd speak with her, with her from the car driving home. It's very similar to how I was with my own mom. But we have each other's back. Um, you know, Anthony, my husband's also in real estate. He's also an appraiser. But we also have our teammates on the team. There's like 10 of us. And we all help each other balance. You know, if I can't be somewhere, they're there for me and vice versa. So I almost think it's easier, you know, having, having that balance, you know, with people working with us, whether it's the family or our family of people like you. We may not be family, family, but your family within the business. You know? Yeah, I'm a witness to that. I can't say that I contribute much, but I, I, it's, sure definitely, um, it, it, it's definitely nice to um, go through a busy day and, and search through a few emails and see some kind words about how good everyone is doing. And that keeps me motivated for just different things in life. Mm -hmm. You know, to Absolutely. me, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm exploring all different areas, figuring out how to be better, always wanting to learn. And, and that's probably why I'm sitting here with Steve, because I would regret it if I didn't do otherwise. If, I, if awesome. I saw an opportunity, and, and it could be as small as possible, and if I don't take it, then I'll regret it. And, right. that, and that's probably the worst thing. You, don't, right. you really don't want to regret yeah. anything. So. Well, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. And the growth that we're, we're able to, I mean, to me, this is an unbelievable experience for me, because I get to, to, to feed off the knowledge that the guests bring. It's like right. someone like you that has this experience that I can just learn from having a young family, hearing you speak about, you know, your your history, the love for your family and, and what you want to do for your for the future of your family and putting them through college without debt. I mean, these are kind of the same things I think about. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned the dream board and, and we've discussed this in the past, how people visualize or what they see, how they they bring their, you know, their future into existence. I was a, I'm a very visual person. I don't do a dream board, but I always see myself doing things, whether it was on a, an, on a field when I was an athlete or even in work. I see myself doing these things, and I feel like if you can see it, you can believe it. Mm -hmm. So these conversations, I think, are incredible because it gives us selfishly, um, 
it gives us so much you know information and, and allows us to grow and I think it's going to do that for for the people listening well isn't it cool too that we can have these conversations and like you and I are at a closing table and we don't know much about one another we're just there to get through the transaction for the good of our clients right, right. but now we get to know each other a little bit more underneath you know the shell right so that's an awesome thing because you get to know each other as a person yeah you know and 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 when you think about like you know visualizing and and think about things that are maybe common among other people that are successful in life um, I think the the great part about it is that if you have a goal it's it's wonderful and I listened to a couple of your other podcasts too and listen to other people talk about goals the thing that's really cool about a goal is that if you set it and you find that you're not quite making it you adjust the sale it's not a big deal you just have to change ref the refocus, right? And you're going to get there. Maybe you set it too, too high to begin, but set it high. Try to get to where you want to go. You can always just change the direction of the sale and get back on track. And if you think about people that are really successful, many of them have failed first before they became the success that they are. Right. So to me, it's, it's okay. Just have the goal set somewhere in your life, whether it's for your personal life, your family, your weight, your health, you know, your business. Have something that you're working towards that you know you're on track or not. If you don't have anything, how do you go anywhere? Yeah, and an important word there, and probably the most, is just try. Because yeah. too often people have thoughts, <clears throat> and everything can sound great in your head, and people, you know, motivating you, talking to your, or, you know, listen to a video. That's all well and good, but if you don't take a step forward, then it literally cannot happen. Right. And Steve and I talk about the simplest of things, like taking the garbage out in the morning, little win, getting up a few minutes early just to stretch out and move a little. Um, you know, all those little things um, are are so important, just doing them over and over again. And they add up. Yeah, yeah. quickly. Yeah. Over time. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Having the courage to keep doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Not quitting and, and being yeah. consistent and yeah. keeping, fi finding, like you said, changing course, but ultimately trying to get to that same goal. Right, right, and right. Th these things are important too, because the net, you talked about family and friends and your team, and this is also us expanding, learning different things about different people and maybe increasing our network. Um, I, I lean on, on, on Nick, I lean on my family, I, I lean on all, all, all types of people when I'm down in the dumps or when I'm stressed out. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do to manage some of the stress and... Uh, I mean, because you are a successful person, and I know that it, it, it comes with, you know, stresses. What are you doing to, to mitigate some of that stuff? Well, probably after I get home and totally abuse my husband. <laughs> Sorry. And Anthony's a great guy, by the way. He's, what a, he's a good guy. He calls you angel, but he's an angel, too, I have to say. Absolutely. He's been uh, one of my biggest gifts in my life, I must say. The journey that we created together and the life that we have together has really been a a complete joy and I feel more than blessed that I have him in my life. You know, we actually started out with other people and engaged when, to other people. Oh. Um, when we both worked at IBM and didn't know one another and uh, broke off our engagements and then met each other through common people and that's how we met each other. Wow. Um, so it's just funny. So he, uh, he's, he's really a great joy. Um, so stress-wise, you know, my husband's been trying to get me to exercise and do all this great stuff for years. And yeah, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, would I love to like be able to, you know, get out there and train and all this stuff. And I don't do that. So He hasn't <laughs> called me yet to, to yell at I know, you. So. <laughs> I know, I know. And he's just so healthy. And he, you know, he exercises since he's young. And I just never did. I never had to. And as I'm getting older, yes, I know I need to do that. Um, but we just started playing. This is going to sound really goofy, but we would, with COVID, COVID's like brought so many cool things uh, to light, unfortunately, due to COVID. Um, there are so many silver linings, right? So we've gotten out, and now he's got me walking every day and that sort of thing. And I do it every day without yelling at him, oh my God, let me get away from my computer and all that stuff. So we just do it, and we got into the groove well over a year and a half of doing it, and we love it. And I take photos, and I post them all over my Facebook, and people comment on them. It's just like a nice way to engage, right? Mm. So one day we're walking not too long ago up at the uh, high school just for a change of scenery, and I'm seeing people out on the tennis courts. Now, I'm the most unathletic, uh, uh, uncoordinated person. I wasn't like art, you know, I paint, draw, sculpt, that kind of thing. And I was, I never played a sport in my life. And I said to him, what are they doing? It kind of looks like fun. And I, you know, it was pickleball. Have you 
have you ever heard of this pickleball thing? Yes. yes. Okay. New, new, new craze. And it's like, uh, to me, it's, I feel like because I like it, it's the old person sport, but <laughs> it's so much fun. So we started playing. I ordered a set and we play literally like five or six nights a week. We go up to the high school. And because I had this commitment tonight, I said to my husband, let's finish up early. Let's go to the high school at like 4.30. You work with me a little because, you know, we, we can do that. And then when the folks came up, we played. So I play for like, we play two hours a night. I'm getting a heck of a lot more on my uh, exercise watch and I'm feeling really great. And I think it's just totally cool. It was like, like a little thing that we started to do. It's great for releasing stress. I love it. I wish I could have four hours up there doing it a night. And of course, we started when the season's changing. So now it's getting dark. So we kind of have to find a place like indoors maybe where we can play for the winter or do it in Florida now and then. That's right. Um, you know, that's but amazing. It's a blast. Uh, it that's unbelievable that you say that because you mentioned, you know, you you, you never really got into it. Um, it was hard to 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 work out and, and stuff like that and be physical. Your mind was focused on work a lot, and I'm sure family and everything. Mm -hmm. But at, at the end of the day, you finally found something you love, and yes. now you love it. It's a blast, and it and it's good for you. It's a blast, and not only re relieving physical stress, I'm sure just just mentally. Yeah, like stepping away from work at the end of the day and yeah. doing that and doing it with family. Yeah, and it's you know Anthony and I will go up. We meet other people. Um, you know the other thing that I love doing is spending time with my grandbabies. You know it's all about. We, we joke about it, but it's the truth. Um, becoming a grandma was like the best thing in the world. I'm a nana. And Emily and Evelyn are actually three and two. Evelyn will be two next week. And um, they make every day bright. No matter how bad a day you're having, it, they just make every day bright, every day bright, filled with happiness and love. So that's my stress relief really with them as well. And we FaceTime every day, even though they only live like two miles from the house. <laughs> we FaceTime every day and they make you laugh and it just makes everything good. Family. It's yeah. all about family and love, you know. It sounds silly, but I, I, you know, after having our three children, and they were also like the biggest joy and accomplishment in my life, right? And I, I say to my daughter, you know, before she told us she had gotten pregnant, I thought that I gave all the love that I could ever have to my own children. And um, when she said that she was pregnant and it was like I had a, a jelly donut that was getting hard on the outside that just suddenly magically became soft and all the jelly was pouring out. It's my love for the baby. I love it's just you amazing. Never, you never had. They're just Yeah, it's amazing. You just don't know how much you have in you and it's fabulous. Wait till you become grandparents someday. Long time off, I know. I can't wait. You know, I am psyched to just, you know, rile the grandkids up and give them back. <laughs> right back. So here's the best. Emily turned, I just have to share. Emily turned... Um, three in September and her sister turns two next week so they're very close so at three they kind of understand more so she loves Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse so I decided to make her a chocolate cake because she likes chocolate with pink buttercream frosting and I bought the big mini ears and the you know the bow and the whole bit but I made sure I cut a hole in the center of the two layer cake and then I filled it with M&Ms Oh and God. and sprinkles and um, Reese's Pieces type M and M's filled with the the, the peanut butter. Yeah. Oh, and then covered it and just frosted the whole thing so that when she cut the cake open, it all flowed out. Oh, so it was very it was a lot of fun. And after she ate that and she got to go home with the parents that night, oh, my daughter said, "Do not do that, Evelyn." <laughs> <laughs> but I am. <laughs> I'll sugar it up. You have to. I'll sugar it up. And, and you, can't, you can't get mad at Nana and oh Papa. It's great. No, it's funny it's how they, they're, they're, there's a difference there because it's with my father. Yeah. I mean, he wouldn't let me eat candy. And then right. with the kids, it's like, what oh do you gosh. want? Popcorn, kitten, oh cotton candy, doesn't matter what they want. So, it's, and you know, we don't feed them bad stuff all the time, but it was just for her birthday. So it was a lot of fun. But they, they really do eat, you know, very healthy. And we try to kind of continue the same thing with them as well. But it was just fun to Amazing. do, to be a Nana. Yeah, kids are great. It's It's been a wonderful three plus years it's and the best yeah my son's probably yeah about the same age maybe two months older yeah so looks amazing olds. beautiful but you Me don't live for yourself anymore right oh no not even no. close so you know the no. kind of cool part is like if you have a really good relationship with your spouse you know really good deep tight love faithful um you know you've got a real strong relationship you grow those babies up and they kind of model what they see and how could it be anything but fabulous? I was going to say, for two young parents, you know, with you know, with younger kids, what, 
you know what worked what worked best any tips that you yeah, can give us like, all advice. <laughs> what knowledge can yeah. you uh, can you give us on, on just you can't there's you got to always talk with them always tell them the truth um, you know communicate always support them no matter what even if it's something that's not good support them explain to them the more that they understand the better um, and always be there for them you know build them up that's what it's about right build them up help them learn what's important. One of the things that I also thought was really important when the kids were young in our house was to teach them time management because there are adults that don't know how to do this, you know? And I was like the lunatic with the big calendar on the counter and everybody had their stuff, you know, all the reports when they were due and, and, and sports and commitments and this and that and colored, coordinated, so everybody knew like if this is where you were and you were over here, well, you better back it up from here to see what you need to do in order to get to that goal of having the report done. So, so are time you, management's pretty cool. You were like that. Now is Anthony opposite, or is he along no, with Anthony you? No, Anthony is. Right? Anthony is so the same. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Where we're different is like I'm probably Oscar and he's Felix. Enough said. But in 40 years, I don't think I've ever had to pick up a piece of clothing from that man ever. Wow. So it's been pretty nice. I hope my wife can say the same about me. He's pretty neat. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to make any comments. <laughs> Steve, you have anything to add to that? Probably not a good one to pull uh, out, but yeah, no. We're, you know. Should we phone in Kate and find out? <laughs> no, <laughs> we should not. We should not. We don't want to let the audience in on yeah, everything. Yeah, really. There's some oh secrets there. Yeah, no, he's pretty kept. good like that. But he's super organized as well. So it, the kids just kind of naturally, I think, kind of got into that groove and learned from one another and, and kind of being around us. Yeah. So time management's important. I like that. It's 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 amazing. Sometimes you forget. You, I mean, maybe we rely on you know school to teach our kids certain things and time management. Talk to them about money. But I, what you said rang true. Is you know be there for them. Tell them the truth. I mean, I, those are things that I wholeheartedly agree with you. That uh, that that's what at least I want to do, and you know sometimes you're going to make mistakes, mm -hmm. but um, if you love them, you're there for them. You're always telling them the truth. I think it wa it washes away a lot of your mistakes. So absolutely. But in seeing how, you know, in seeing what you've accomplished, obviously you didn't make many mistakes. So. Oh, we all make mistakes, yeah. you know, and that's how they learn, and that's how you learn. But they're look being a parent or being a human doesn't come with a manual, right? So you right. do your best. You try to put out good and you attract good, right? We're a bunch of magnets in my book. You know, you put out good, hopefully you attract good. And um, when you treat people with kindness and you make it all about one another and people, it's all gonna come around. You know, like even with real estate, you know, we close a ton of deals um, and we're very successful as a team. It's wonderful. But the minute you focus on that and not on what's right for the client, it will blow up. I right. learned that early on in the, my career. And it's just never, I can't, you cannot make it about you. You've got to make it about the client. And that's kind of how I try to run my business. It's about my clients and it's about my teammates. I want to be there for everybody, help them get to that level of success that they want to get to. And you know, you start out with these folks that come to you to sell their house or to buy a house with you. And they're a stranger basically, right? right. And they become in many cases a friend. Not everyone, uh, not every client, right? But they become a friend, and um, it's just a wonderful way to do business. Um, but just you got to focus on that being the goal, not on on me, not on you know the gift of you know the business, and it will come. Right. You know. Yeah, that's something I actually would love to talk about because it's important for the audience to hear. You know, we mentioned family, communication, mm -hmm. just talking, telling the truth. Um, with sales, as with mm -hmm. any type of sales, whether it's real estate or car salesman, you know, there's always a stigma. Um, and in real estate, it's it's a very, very expensive transaction. Mm -hmm. So with clients, you're, it, it can get emotional. Yes, it sure. can. And as, as I've seen, I'm sure you've seen all types of emotions yep. in, in the years. How do you, when you're meeting with clients, how are you gaining their trust from the moment you make eye contact and meet with them? Like, what are you doing to get them to trust you, to forget about that stigma and really assure them that you're there for them and not just a paycheck? You know, I try to approach it very naturally in terms of this is who I am. You know, this is, this is me. This is how I look every day. Um, this is how I look when I work. Um, I'm just me. There's, um, there's nothing, I don't have any other facade. Um, I tend to be very upfront, I'm very direct, 
and I'm extremely honest. And if I say it to a client in the beginning, you know, I'm working with somebody now, we've been out a couple of times, and I said to them, I know it may not seem like I want to sell you a house, <laughs> truthfully, yeah. but I want it to be something that you're happy with. Because when you're happy in the end, you're going to tell other people about me. And maybe they'll want to come to me and I can help them find a home or sell a home. So I'd rather be, you know, the agent that I'm taking you to go see this house that you want to see. And I know there are two ways to get there. I want to make sure that I take you through the direction that I think you should see, as well as the other direction I think you should see. You need to see the whole big picture. I just want to be honest and open with people. And uh, that's how I approach it. You know, they can ask me anything that they want. I'm happy to answer questions for them, and I'll always be available for them. You know, I just try to put myself out there for everybody. That's an amazing nuance. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I love the, you, you know, it, it, that's a great point. It's like you're showing someone, you know, a property, and you can come in one way and show them, oh, you're coming in through that street. Oh, I'm, this is the neighborhood. But then, you know, there's an alternative route there that they may not like, and you want to make sure they know everything about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just, to me, hark speaks to your experience and 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 like you said to your honesty because it's something that a lot of people wouldn't even think of right right because well, you could paint this picture to the client that you know isn't necessarily the truth it's not a lie either but right to be open and and, and authentic and to be really thorough is, mm -hmm. is unbelievable and that separates you from a lot of other people well, for you just, sure. i just want to be honest I, I want people i don't ever want somebody to say why didn't you tell me that why didn't you show me that that was, you know, whatever? I, I want them to have all of the information. And I always tell people, you know, remember that when you fall in love with this, make sure you look around it because you're buying the neighborhood. You're buying a beautiful home in a neighborhood. Look at what's around you, you know. So look at the bigger picture. You know, you can't just look at the one thing. You've got to look at the bigger picture like anything else in life, you know. So I just try to be honest. And I find honesty works. You know, it's just who I am. The truth I'll set you free. Yeah, and sometimes it's not pleasant, you know. You're right. That's that's the know? problem is that people will be quick to get offended by certain things, you know, and um, different strokes for different folks. We're not liked by everyone, unfortunately. What, and I'm and I'm sure, being as successful as you are, you realize that like not everyone is going to like you. Mm -hmm. I see it all the time. I'm sure Steve does Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. you you just be honest and truthful with yourself and the people you're working with. Some people may walk away. But you know what? The good ones, the good ones will stay. Right, and yeah. you just do your very best. You know, like I, I used to tell the kids when they were younger. You know, and I learned it early on, so I shared it with them. You should put out your best effort at everything you do, personal, business, or whatever. Whether you're in school or what have you, put out your best effort. If your best effort's a B, you're going to get your B. If your best effort it, that if you're going to put out is a D, you're going to get your D. So decide what your best effort is and put it out every day in everything that you do. Just try to be the best at what it is that you're trying to address at that moment in time, whether it's personal or business, and you will get what you deserve. Right. But you're in control of that. You're in control of how you wake up every morning. Am I gonna have a good day or a bad day? Wow, you know, I get up, I think about how grateful I am. You know, I stop in my, I, I love our church. Um, you know, I have great faith. Um, I, I stop in my chapel and I, you know, I pray, I pray every day, but I'm truly, I pray for my gratefulness and for my blessings because I have many and, um, you know, to help other people, you know, everybody needs help, right? So it's about being grateful. I, that's just how I look at things. It's just the way it is. And it feels good. You know? Yeah. I say to myself all the time, you know, <sighs> you watch the news, you listen to stories, you talk to people, you, you could be driving down the road and mm -hmm. seeing something terrible and you're like, mm -hmm. you just have to thank like count your blessings and mm -hmm. realize that no matter how hard you have it, someone else has it worse. Absolutely. And most likely half the world has it worse. Than you. Absolutely. If we live in an awesome country and it's probably, you know, most of the world has it worse right. than us. So that's what I do to remind myself just as you, you got to count your blessings mm -hmm. and, and really, really have faith that, you know, you're here for a reason and you just got to keep moving forward and Absolutely. doing good things. Absolutely. It's the only way to be. That's it. Feels really good. It does. It feels good to, to give back and it, it does feel good to reflect on things you've done and be grateful for these things and not take it for granted and, and not live with regrets. I like what you said. Give it give it your best so that you don't have to look back and wonder what could have been, you know. Yeah, because if you don't give it your all, then you might say, wow, I wonder what would have happened if I did. Not that we don't sometimes say that. Right. But if you go in halfway, you're always going to get the result halfway back. So just Decide what you want and go after it. 
and just do your very best and be good to people. It's, it's, isn't it nice to be kind to people? It's awesome. I mean, there's just I so know. much I don't stuff know why. going on in the world. Like, don't you just love seeing somebody and smiling at somebody or I don't know helping what, somebody? I'm not sure what, what people get out of the, not doing that. Because I agree, it's, you know, you, you, you feel better about yourself and you're nice to others. I don't think, I listen, you, we touched on this earlier. No one's perfect. We're going to mm -hmm. make mistakes. It's like I've treated people, you know, and not the way I'd want to treat them sometimes. And you, you look back and you don't feel good about it. Right. right. So you wonder why people do that. And it's, it, it's like I think sometimes it's just this negative loop we get into and, yep. and we don't know any, any better. Uh, but if you if you have gratitude, you reflect, you're, you're kind to others, you put that out there, I think it comes back. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think that people should really try to do that more because I think, in essence, you're going to get back from the universe what you give it. So Yeah, yeah. But, I'm, a, I'm a believer. Yeah, I think it's important for everyone to realize that, you know, you talk about, um, you know, having a career – working your butt off at it but then you know down the road giving back a little bit you, mm -hmm. you created a team you wanted to help others not necessarily buy a house but you wanted to help others be successful mm -hmm. and that makes you feel good too absolutely and um i believe in that wholeheartedly as well like if you, if you learn something you become an expert at it if god forbid you can be and you got to pass on that knowledge right and really you know turn around and give your hand to the next person right and i and i love doing that with the people on the team you know we've had so many team meetings pre-COVID and can't wait to get that stuff all back and, and, and doing that again. And having Elise on the team has really been a great, a great gift. And I think it's going to be super helpful for the rest of the people on the team as well. Because like I said before, I, I'm the oldest on the team. Well, except for my husband, but I'm the oldest on the team. And, you know, she's got a lot of really great ideas that I think, you know, the other folks on the team will really embrace more than mom does. Um, and they will be able to grow as well like she is. So it's, it's just a great avenue to be able to share with one another. And in the mix, you know, we're meeting people, we're helping them find a new place to live, or, or maybe, you know, maybe they're selling their home to move to retire, or what have you, um, or a new family starting off. I mean, there's just so many nice situations um, and, and working for 99% of the time You've got a pleasant situation in the end. It's worth every bit of it. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, I, obviously, you got into real estate for a, a number of reasons that you already discussed. But it sounds like early on, you knew it was a good vehicle to provide you with certain things in life, right? Mm -hmm. um, Florida investment properties. I'm a firm believer in, in real estate as an investment and, and furthering you know, my lifestyle is... You think that it's helped you to get to where you are, to, to, to invest in real estate? Do you think it's something that you know, our viewers should should try to, to try Absolutely. To think about? Absolutely. And, you know, I real estate is a, a great way to invest your money. Um, the market's really hot right now and really in practically every market. Um, so some people have a little bit of a challenge because they're concerned about, you know, getting selling their home and not finding a home or what have you. But... You, I, I just don't think you can go wrong with real estate, you know? Yeah, I don't know how you feel. It's, I, I'm in real estate. I, obviously, you know that and the viewers know that. So because I believe in it as, as an, an investment vehicle, as, as well as I do think owning your own home is important, there are people and gurus that may argue otherwise. But because I believe in, in real estate, um, that it's good for the individual, it's always helped me to be... I think better at what I do because mm -hmm. it's, you know, I'm not selling fool's gold. I'm, I'm right. providing a service for something that I really believe in right. for myself. You know, I'm a landlord, I have my own home and I've worked hard to do these things. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I've always promoted. And I, I just think it's a nice way of supplementing income. You got to work hard, look at for looking for a lot of different ways of creating revenue mm -hmm. so that we can enjoy our lives. Right. Right. I, I do think that, you you know, there's a certain degree of money that once you have, having more money is not really going to make you happy or have mm -hmm. a good life. But I do believe that if you don't have enough money, that the stresses of that can mm -hmm. cause a lot of issues with marriage and family and, right. and all that stuff. So, I mean, I think we want to promote, you know, well-being and, and doing that is certainly people working hard and, and trying to develop, you know, wealth and, and, and 
that's one of the things you talked about, time management skills. It's one thing that I think is important for teaching kids, but also, you know, teach them about money. You know, right. you know don't be scared of money. Money's not the end all be all, but at the same time, money's important and you should try to figure out how to, you know, you know, save, invest and, you know, right. not spend more than you have. Right. And and enjoy real estate too. You have a vacation home. How how much time do you get to, to go and spend in Florida and enjoy that? Well, you know, when I do go to Florida, I mean, it'll be nice for later for retiring, um, but it's been a real great thing for us to get involved with. Um, I wound up getting my, like I said earlier, I've got my broker's license down, license down there. So um, I, we just kind of went into it thinking, let's buy something for later on for when we decide to retire, we'll have a place. And the places, especially with COVID, has become a place that the kids have really enjoyed being there as well with being able to work remote. You know, for me, it's a little bit more difficult because I do what I do here, but because so many people are going to Florida now, it's really been nice because I can kind of hop on a plane, take them down, show them properties, and they buy down there. Um, and I have so many people that have called me also up here looking for referrals because they've got a property that they want to sell in Florida. And when I find out where it is, I can help them as well. So um, I don't get down there as often as I'd like, but, you know, I'm not looking to retire quite yet. Right. Um, but we try to get down there, you know, maybe a week, you know, every other month or so. Um, so it's been a, a really nice, a nice treat for us. But when I go to Florida, I work the entire time I'm there, I'm never off the grid. Never, right. never off the grid. Now it's going to be really great having Elise too, um, you know, on the team that I can really kind of count on her when I'm not here to be able to pick up my slack and not worry about anything when I'm not here. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm on the grid at all times when I'm away. I don't not answer my phones. <laughs> Do you ever have the urge to just put the phone down and <laughs> say... You know, this is the very first time I did it. It's turned off tonight because I didn't want to feel my watch buzzing the whole time uh, I was sitting here. Because well, I didn't tell anybody. It's a scary feeling. It is. It? I didn't want to be like, oh my gosh, Elise is trying to get me or somebody's trying to get me at home. So yeah, I took it off. But no, I, yeah, I mean, do you feel the urge? Of course. But you can't be in the business that we're in. That's very true. You know? um, the, and the pro con of the technology or it's yeah. exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. Could, you could be missing a text or a call and, and worried that it's, you know. And they go straight to the next. Exactly. You know, it's just the way it is. Um, how do you manage that? Let's say um, you're, you know, you're, you're having family time, whether it's with your husband, <clears throat> your, your kids, your grandkids, or just the whole family in general. How do you, how do you manage that? And how do you feel, you know, God forbid, if you think you're looking at your phone and working too much and you, and you feel like the family is wanting to spend time with you? You know, I remember when my kids were early, uh, when they were younger, when they were in high school, and um, I can remember being early on in my career and having to pick up from practice or a game and run, and it made me feel really, really awful. But I think, you know, you've got to remember, you know, for me at least, I, I was working at IBM. I left when I first had my first child, um, Elise, and I stayed home with my three kids, and I was an at-home mom for many, many years. And um, when I decided to go back to work initially, I worked at another, it seems like another lifetime, but I was selling fireplaces for somebody and um, stoves and stuff. And that kind of got my feet back in the groove of being in sales again. And then I decided, you know, when I told you the other story about going into real estate, that's right. when I went into real estate, you know, very quickly, like in a year. Um, but I spent a lot of time with my children bringing them up. So, um, you know, when they were younger, I didn't have too much of the phone ringing the way it rings now. For me personally, my career at this point, my kids are grown. They're 33, 31, and 29. And it's my husband and I. And we both work in the same business. We've always been in the same industry our entire life together. So it's made being in real estate where you're needed a lot by clients, you need to be available, you need to be on the road, to have your partner's support in what you're doing makes the job that much easier. If he was somebody that was not doing real estate at all and didn't have any understanding, it would be very challenging, I think. Um, but I mean, even now I see it like, for example, with my daughter, you know, cause she's very busy with real estate and she's got two little ones. So I, I tell her a lot, take the time because they're only that age for a short period. When they really, really need you, when they really are starting to develop who they are, and they want to spend that time with mommy or they need the hug or they got a boo-boo. Mm. Take the time and be with them because, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. You can pick up the phone in another 15 minutes, not a biggie. So true. Steve you and know? I talk about it all the time, you know, being where we are with, with 
um, how old our kids are right now. It's hard. And and it's a struggle. It's hard. I know. You don't, don't want to. You don't want that phone to be near you when you get home, and and you're and it's and it's daddy time. But mm -hmm. you know something's something's calling it back. There's that urge. There's that addiction to it, and mm -hmm. it, it's really important to remember to just let it go because, like you said, this this is the time this for is us. The time. Yeah, yeah, be present. Yeah, because they're only tiny and little and growing and developing who they are and what they think and what they believe. At this, what, by the time they're four, they kind of got their thing all together? And then be some, present. Yeah, they don't even want to see mommy and daddy sometimes. Yeah, and it's I, like yeah. three, four years old. I know. Like seriously, you know, and I they don't snuggle. Ask, yeah, they don't ask for much too. It's like I know. they just want a little bit of our time. I know. I, I, I have the luxury. It's, it's a blessing and a curse sometimes being, you know, having a team or having your own business because you know you think you're going to have all this flexibility which you do have but instead of using it for your own personal um you know escapades you're usually working right mm -hmm. because you know you're proud to do it you love what you're doing so you get involved in it but when, when you do use that that flexibility that you do have um and i have an opportunity to go and visit my you know my daughter at ballet it's like mm -hmm. she sees me there she lights up lights she's up. looking and you know and you know, just you being there means so much to them. And it's, we need to really, I, I, I need to really make sure that I can do what I can to be there. We have responsibilities. We have, you know, bills to pay. So we have to work. We have an environment that sometimes it's super busy. So, you know, obviously you got to get it while it's hot, right? right? Because if the market were to slow down, but um, you're right, it's, it, it can go quick and they're not little for too long. So, you know, maybe you're, you're going to keep reiterating this with your daughter. It's like, you know, the business is going to be there. Look, I've been here for many years and I keep trying to tell myself, you know, 20, 30 years from now, I can still work. You know, mm -hmm. I'm in a business where I can work forever if I want, mm -hmm. you know. It's interesting you say that because we talk about it a lot, Anthony and I, about, you know, like when and if we're going to retire. Right. And being in the business that we're in is, is such a gift in so many different ways. You know, we get to carve out our time, although the market's super busy right now, so you don't really have that ability. You have to be present, take it while you got it, that kind right. of thing. However, um, this is a business that you can do literally until forever. And that's a blessing. <laughs> and it could kind and of be a curse. curse. Well, I wanted to ask you, yeah. You the Florida property <laughs> would be a curse. What's your oh, five-year plan? What's yeah, your 10? But well, you know what? It doesn't. You don't really have to think about that, yeah. like you yeah. said. It's, you can, it's a great business to be in, I guess. So, I, you know, we can work as long as we want. And, and as, as much as you want. And as long as people trust me and um, want my help, I'll be there for them. But my goal is someday to be able to maybe not do it as hard as I do today and hopefully be able to take in a lot of sunrises and sunsets with my husband and enjoy those babies getting bigger on a beach and you know, playing more pickleball and riding bikes more and uh, getting out and doing the things that we enjoy doing. We started to play golf. You know, that's a lot of fun, too. I, just doing things together. And yeah. he and I are just always together. So we're, we're really loving that and um, trying, to, trying to take that time to do it as much as we can. So, you know, it's all good. Yeah, the setup okay. is important, too. It's, I know Nick can speak to this because I know he goes on a lot of trips uh, to Florida. <laughs> And, and I know you're lucky. Steve, you know, no. Steve's on me. We've had to uh, delay a few episodes. <laughs> I love it. I, I love, have been I love present. It. It's, 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 we, we've got to delay episodes all the time because he's on <laughs> vacation. Really, Blame it on the. Awesome. Well, we can, the can ask. Uh, we can ask someone out there in the audience. Mm -hmm. I think that'll confirm uh, and yeah. corroborate that story. It's true. <laughs> no, but it, but it's funny. It's it, they, I I get to do that. My father is in Florida, and, mm -hmm. and you know, in, in the winter, and and my in-laws have a place there. How so nice. We get to visit with the children and. and they love it. It's some of the best times they've had is their trips to their grandparents. And oh, yeah. So it's like these these things, the setup sometimes is so important. It's like you do this for, for whatever reason and it ends up, you know, being a blessing for the entire family because, you know, especially like you said, during COVID to get away and be outside and be in, in the winter here in Connecticut. I, I happen to love the Four Seasons and skiing and all mm -hmm. that. I, they, may, they may change one day. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be able to go and be outside, especially during what we were, you know, 
I guess you could say we're still going through, right? Right. But um, it, it is a blessing for me, and I'm sure it's a blessing for your family. Yeah, so. it's been great. We love it. And it gets you outside more. You're able to be outside for longer. I mean, look how dark it gets so quick now. We, you know, in just like two weeks, you know, we would stop playing ball at, you know, 7.15, 7.30, and now we're kind of off the court by 10 to 7, you know. Yeah. Already it's happening, and you know. And then that clock changes, then it really is. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I didn't grow up with this beautiful ability of you know going someplace whenever we wanted to be with my grandparents or to be with the family we didn't have any of this when i was a kid nothing like this right. you know i we didn't go we didn't go on an airplane with our family and go on a vacation we didn't have that we went to the catskills once a year to an italian american club and had the best time <laughs> of our life since i was a kid we went every year and again i we thought we were rich that's how we Well, vacationed. you were rich. You had, your, you had each other. You had your yeah. family. Like, and my what's... dad worked his tail off for that week. And, oh, gosh, how he and my mom used to enjoy it and all of us. We have such great memories. But look at how much more we are able to provide in terms of what we can do and share with our children. We're so blessed. We're so lucky. Right? And our grandkids. Yeah, yeah you bring this... back a ton of memories. I mean, as... As you did, I grew up in a very small house with three bedrooms and one bathroom with actually mm -hmm. eight people. Yeah. And um, we didn't we didn't know anything other than, you know, if I go to school and a friend's like, oh, I got this much money in my saving account. I'm like, oh, well, so do I. But I didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you felt rich. And, and just like you, my first trip, my, my first time I was on a plane, I think I was 17 or 18 years old. Our vacations or, or just our summer stuff to do out of school was going to the beach yeah. in the same town, right, right, right near you, you right. Know, Fairfield, Connecticut, right, and just hanging out on Candlewood Lake. But we didn't know any better, and right? It was just and you about, were happy, yeah, exactly. And um, you know, I'm, I I pray my kids can can see that and feel those types of things that I did as a kid these days, being mm -hmm. how different it is. Mm -hmm. So. Um, being, being that you were able to raise kids back then, and then you see the kids today, what, what kind of like advice would you give like a younger individual, let's say, who who's, doesn't, doesn't have their way yet, likes real estate, or God forbid, doesn't like real estate, likes something else, which, just, just in general advice, what, what would you give a younger individual who may be listening? You know, um, when you're young, you can kind of, you're working with a white canvas. So you don't have any limitations, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, think about what's important to you in life. I'm, like I said before, I'm really big on the whole visualization thing. Think about what your goals are. Think about what you're good at. Think about what, you, what lights your fire. Um, you know, me as a young person, I knew I wanted more. And I knew I was willing to work really hard for whatever it was that I was going to do in my life from the first time I bought my first car up until today, the way that I work and continue to work. And if you can find that flame inside of you and just continue to feed it, um, stay positive, um, look to other people that are successful in life in general, whether it's in your faith, um, your belief, your, you know, where you think you may want to work, meet people, listen, ask questions, take in whatever you possibly can, and just decide whatever it is that you want to do, that you're going to do it better than anybody else. And just go after it. Then if, if in fact you decided, you know, I think about kids that go off to college and they come out with a degree, and after all that time and money and effort, they decide not to pursue it, so what? Change the direction of your sale. Go find it. I have, you know, another one of my kids, Gabrielle, my middle one, you know, she went to school to become a teacher. It wasn't for her. And she reinvented herself and she's doing phenomenally in sales. So there's no manual, right? Just go out and figure out what lights your fire and keep feeding the flame and go and get it. And there is no right or wrong. Embrace it. Life is short. Work hard and you will be able to be rewarded accordingly and enjoy life. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love the the sale, the, the you know the changing courses because it's it, so many. There's so many kids that don't know what they want to do. You know, there's so many. There's a lot of people that are born and know what they want to do from the first moment they take a breath. You know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I, I to a certain extent kind of was like that. And you know, I know there's a lot of people that have uncertainty in what they want to do. And and I, I just love your advice. It's like you know what, be passionate. Try to understand what you're good at. 
go for it and, and, and no matter what you end up doing, make sure you like give it your all. Give it your all. It's yeah, just, you always get paid back. I mean, and it worked for work for you, right? Yeah, worked for me. I'm real happy. You know, you put out good. Hopefully you're going to get back good. Um, I believe in God winks, you know, I'm, I'm all about them. Put out good. You know, you may not know when you're going through that journey in life, you know, uh, why, gosh, I was thinking about so-and-so and then so-and-so pops into your life a couple of days later and it's like, wow, how did that happen? Well, to me, it's a God wink. And if you look at your journey in life, you may not always um, understand why you go through the things that you go through in life. Some of them are sad, some of them are heavy, some of them are unexpected. But if you kind of journal a little bit about the experience that you've had, you'll see that you get to the goal, but that you were put on this journey for a reason in order to get there. So I believe in that kind of stuff. I know it's a little woo-woo for people, but I'm all about it and I love it. That's no. what keeps me, me going. And clearly it works. And you know, similar things I go through every day and even God winks, as you said, like the little reminders listen to motivating things you never know when a little spark is going to you know ignite your own spark and, and take in a direction yeah you have no idea where you're going you're so right yeah you have as we know have a tremendous partnership with your husband mm -hmm. and i think nick and i have great partnerships with 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 our wives and i think that we are successful and will continue to be successful because we have wonderful women by our side they're as beautiful on the inside as they are on the outside what is your best advice and how we can be better husbands and better partners? Um, what does your husband do right? What does he do wrong? What can we learn from him? <laughs> oh, gosh. Do I really want this to be recorded? Uh, I don't want to make him get too make big sure ahead. It's, you make know? sure it's at least nice. Um, you, know? <laughs> you know what? He's, uh, I think, just communicating with people. Look, when you're younger and you're, you know, more you know, more foolish and less patient and all that good stuff, you know, you, you can kind of do this a little bit, you know, 40 years later, you know, next year for us, you know, you kind of get to know the good, the bad and the ugly of, of one another, right? In the beginning, you're putting on your best dress to like show and uh, kind of get that whole thing going on. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about finding somebody who shares in the same things that you share in, feels the way you feel. Uh, if it wasn't for my husband, he supports me in every and any thing I do and in my feelings. Um, you know, I lost my dad this past year, my mom like six years prior. If I tell you, I don't know how I would have gotten through I'm losing the two, that. thank you, losing the two most important people in my entire life without the support and strength of my husband. Um, I, you know, he's he's my guy, he's my person. And I think that just uh, having a really strong uh, communicative uh, relationship together is uh, is how you get along, you know? It's never perfect, but um, I wouldn't want to be without him. Yeah, no one goes it alone. It's important to remember that you always yeah. need someone by your side. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you just can't do it alone. And he gets me, you know, when I get exactly, him. Exactly, right? You know, and now we play pickleball together. It's awesome. <laughs> Pickleball. We're gonna have to pick up. We're gonna have to yeah. do a pickleball. Oh my gosh! I don't know. I don't know. I didn't huh? want to say this, but a lot of my patients are coming in. They're playing pickleball, paddleball, and I'm like, Are they oh. coming in and they're getting hurt? Uh, kind of, sort of. <laughs> All right, that's something to watch so for. Not easy. to deter you, I I encourage um, movement. Movement. Be consistent with it as you're doing every day. Just just remember, you know. What, what's really important in life just be be careful at the same time that's all yeah and you know one of the things that uh anthony is super athletic and um he's really pushed me to uh the point where i see how important it is to stretch so, absolutely because yeah. i've already hurt myself a couple of times in the very beginning i was like wow that's so crazy but really pushed me to stretch and yeah, it really makes people, a huge difference people don't realize it yeah people think movement or exercise has to be something crazy yeah. like they see on a jazz yeah. exercise video yeah. no like move your body yeah, literally just move. Get up. Don't sit on the sofa all night. If you rest, you rust. Yeah. I've heard that many times like over that. the years. That's good. I like that. <laughs> um, you've given us some awesome insight, and, you know, you work with a lot of people, and, and it wouldn't be um, – we wouldn't be able to close this out without finding out who your favorite attorney is to work with. Oh, oh no. favorite attorney? <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder. Oh, man. And I who's my that. favorite other realtor? Oh, uh. You know. <laughs> I will say you were worried about the, uh, the, how it was going to go. You were unbelievable. Oh gosh! Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the secrets to successful life and a good life. And we can't wait to have you on in the future. Well, thank you. And you guys keep up the great work, and it's really inspiring for other people. And I appreciate you. Um, and to the Boa Life. Cheers. To the Boa life. Salute. Boa life. Good Salute. help. Salute.
<laughs> Good help. Thank, Thank you for you. being with us. <laughs> another great night, a gr another great episode. Bye, everybody.